Standardized tests have been part of American education for decades, but have become increasingly controversial in recent years. Many states have attempted to alter their standardized testing policies, but changes are still necessary to ensure that students are being given a fair and equal opportunity to succeed. While tests are supposed to assess a student's progress, it has been argued that these timed assessments may be more detrimental than beneficial. A main criticism is that standardized tests negatively impact students from certain racial and socioeconomic groups. Schools are faced with the challenge of how to address this issue, as testing methods should be fair and allow for equal opportunities among all races and classes. A brief look at the background of testing helps us understand their role today. The first standardized tests were used centuries ago in China as a way to determine whether someone was qualified for participation in civil service. Here in the United States, the first thoughts of using formal assessment to test student achievement came about in 1838. After the Civil War through the end of World War I, new forms of assessment were established to measure student progress and determine whether they were prepared for college. The widespread use of mandatory testing during this time led to increasing opposition and brought into question the goals of the American school system. At the beginning of the 20th century, the implementation of statewide standardized testing systems began to rise. The creation of the College Entrance Examination Board, the development of Alfred Binet's intelligence tests, and the administration of the first SAT tests is evidence that testing was becoming an increasingly important aspect of American education. In 1925, a survey done by the U.S. Bureau of Education demonstrated that these types of mandatory timed tests were being used to classify students based on achievement. In 2001, Congress passed the No Child Left Behind Act, which gave the federal government a more active role in the education of students. This act required that students took standardized tests regularly throughout their school career. The act was repealed in 2015 and replaced by the Every Student Succeeds Act, which attempted to decrease the role of the federal government in education policies, including the testing of students. With this act, states no longer had to use test scores as a measure of teacher accountability, but they were still required to assess schools to ensure that all students were receiving a proper education. While certain policies were still enforced by the federal government, this act gave individual states more authority to make their own decisions regarding standardized tests. We asked several students at Colgate University about their experiences with standardized testing. First, we began by asking students about the role standardized testing played in their schooling experience. What standardized tests have you taken in the past? I had to take CRTs, SBAC, EOCs, PSAT, and ACT. Did your state require yearly standardized tests? Yeah. When did you begin taking these tests? Uh, third grade. Okay. Did you take yearly standardized tests? And if so, when did they start? Do you remember? Um. Yeah, I did in middle school, like ERBs. Um, I think they started in like fifth or four, sixth grade. Did your state require yearly standardized tests? Yes, I think I started probably like second grade or something, but it was like always at the end of the year and it was like a pretty big thing in my area and like results were sent out and it was like the talk of the town. Did your state require yearly standardized tests? Yes. If we took... Um, like a math and English state test in sixth grade in middle school, but not in high school. What standardized tests have you taken? SAT, ACT, PACT, and ones for like learning disability check. Did your state require yearly standardized tests? Um, oh, the ERBs in middle school, but then in high school we were required to take the PSAT every single year except junior and senior, so freshman and senior. Um, so when did you begin taking these tests? Um, did we start taking the ERBs in fourth grade? What standardized tests have you taken? The SAT, the ACT, the ELB, the IFEE, and subject tests. 
One of the main arguments against today's use of standardized testing is that the practice is detrimental for certain groups of people, especially minorities. In the United States, we have an obvious gap in achievement that has continued to widen. Interestingly, similar variations in test scores amongst different races and classes have been present since the earliest days of testing. One of the predominant issues surrounding the use of standardized testing is the creation of social inequalities in American education. The large differences in test score distributions are typically reflective of race and socioeconomic status and are also related to disparities in home and school resources. Children of higher socioeconomic status usually attend better schools, have more guidance from adults, and are ultimately more likely to perform better on standardized tests. Due to their impact on a student's future opportunities, test performance at all levels is critical. But what can be done when social and economic inequities make student success increasingly difficult, if not impossible, for some to achieve? It is easy to see why differences in education and socioeconomic status often lead to the reproduction of current social structures and make social mobility for children of less privileged backgrounds more difficult. From 1980 until 2004, Data from the National Assessment of Education Progress showed that test scores often corresponded with the level of parental education. The study found that children of college-educated parents outscored children of parents who did not attend college by 30 to 40 points. One study looked into whether school-level improvements, like changes in classroom size, school size, and teacher mobility, would lead to better results or if factors like socioeconomic status and race would mitigate the impact of, pre of the previously mentioned reforms. The study determined that reforms within schools would not be able to overcome the impact that socioeconomic status and race have on test scores. As this heavily debated topic unfolds, some say that the variation in test scores accurately reflects different levels of knowledge and skills. Others argue that the differences are directly related to the quality of education, amount of resources, socioeconomic status, and race. If that is indeed the case, it is understandable how standardized tests work to perpetuate the privilege gap. By continuing to disregard the impact of critical factors like race and socioeconomic status, society cannot effectively address how to measure and improve student success. Another major issue surrounding the use of standardized tests is that they are unfair to students from different cultures. These tests are not usually developed to allow students of varying cultures to perform well. The only way to ensure that all groups of people are being given an equal chance to succeed is to develop tests that are specific to every cultural group. The cultural bias inherent in many standardized tests does not allow for certain groups of people to perform well and ultimately leads to a decline in certain aspects of a student's self-concept. Standardized tests are criticized for their unfair judgment of a student's academic potential and level of academic achievement. Students who do not perform well are often seen as incapable or deficient. The ability for one test to accurately represent the academic success of a student is certainly questionable. When asked, how well do you think the standardized tests you've taken measure your intelligence and abilities, many students responded similarly. Not really well because it's obviously like a standard for everyone, so it has to include the super smart people and like the not dumb people, but like people who aren't as smart as the super smart people, and so it's not really distributed pretty evenly. No, not really. Like, I think they're useful for some things, but mm -hmm. yeah, like everyone's like a different learner, so I feel like you can't like yeah go True. off of standardized tests alone. Not well. <laughs> Why? Um, because I know that I'm not like a genius, but I would qualify myself as smart. And if you look at some of my standardized test scores, they do not say that. Like the first year I took the PSAT, I got a 910. So it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think that they accurately portray it, but yeah. Definitely not because I was never the best standardized tester, but I like definitely knew a lot in the class, I'd say, but just I wasn't the best test taker, and I feel like that shouldn't be measured in a test. I don't think that they're good, because it's just one, like, it's just one test, so, like, someone could have, like, a bad day and, like, have, mm -hmm. like, not do well. 
Um, but that's not really an indicator of like how intelligent they are. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the claim that these tests do not accurately measure a student's academic potential is shown by the fact that, on average, a person does better in college than their scores on a standardized test would predict. The validity of these tests is also questionable, as they are known to be flawed by content irrelevance, which leads to an increase or decrease in the test scores of certain groups. Some say that the emphasis put on these tests is extremely unfair, since in many cases for the college entrance standardized tests, one day's performance may outweigh four years of classroom accomplishments. Due to the many ways that test validity is compromised, including test setting, scoring, preparation, and cheating, putting such a large amount of trust into these scores is problematic. Overall, evidence points to the fact that standardized tests are unable to adequately represent academic achievement, cognitive ability, or academic aptitude. A student's performance can be greatly impacted by racial stereotypes. A study was done to determine the impact that negative academic stereotypes can have on high-achieving African Americans. Large amounts of research have proven that African American students feel that their teachers underestimate their academic potential. Students who have been negatively stereotyped based on their race often feel that they need to prove themselves because they worry about being labeled as academically inferior. This fear of being seen in this way is called stereotype threat and is another factor that prevents many minority students from performing to their best of their abilities. Some say that standardized tests reinforce the use of memorization and do not aid in preparing students to think critically and analytically. In addition, the content usually tested does not require students to apply their knowledge to real life situations. If students are being taught how to memorize facts, formulas, and the way a test functions, it is detrimental in the long run as they will not be well prepared for higher level education. Learning critical thinking skills is much more important to future success than learning how to take and do well on a test. An additional problem is that children from less wealthy families are often unable to pay for tutoring and are not given an equal and fair chance at succeeding on these tests. Do you feel that the curriculum was centered around preparing you for the test? Not in elementary school as much, but definitely in high school with like APs. Do you believe that standardized tests measure your critical thinking skills, or do you think that they are based more on memorization? And it's easy to like learn how to take the test rather than like just have that knowledge. A frequent criticism regarding standardized tests is that they lead to specific test-oriented curriculums. This is often referred to as teaching to the test, which can severely limit the opportunity for various educational experiences. If the curriculum was less focused on the test, instructors would likely be able to teach more important and valuable lessons to their students. How much time did your school spend preparing you for standardized tests? Um, again, in younger years, it was like most of the year or like a few months before we knew we would be taking the test, which is usually in like the spring. Do you feel like um, APs were like pretty much just teaching you to the AP test or not? Um, yeah, they, I mean, a little bit, they definitely like taught the material and then like they'd be like, these are the questions that they're going to ask mm -hmm. on the AP. So did your school spend a lot of time preparing for standardized tests? For AP classes, definitely. Like, we always took the finals beforehand, and it was, like, very stressed that you, like, have to take it. Do you feel that teachers were almost teaching to the standardized tests? And yeah. Okay. Like, especially with, like, AP classes. Um, like, some of the classes would literally just teach you stuff that was going to be on the AP. Um, and, like that's how their curriculum was set up. Do you feel that the curriculum was centered around preparing you for the test? If so, do you feel that this had, had a, this had a positive or negative effect on your overall educational experience? I feel like in younger years, a lot of it was, like a lot of our curriculum was centra centralized like around standardized tests. And I do feel like it took away from like actually learning more important things that we could have been doing. One of the main reasons that instructors teach to the test is because they can be seen as accountable for their students' performance. It is unfair to make a teacher solely accountable for a student's performance on these tests because there are many other factors that need to be considered. 
For example, student motivation, parental support, resources, socioeconomic status, and others must be seen as potential factors contributing to a student's test score. Because of this, test scores should be viewed as a shared responsibility and teachers should not be held completely accountable for the performance of their students. A single test should not be used to measure the quality of a teacher and other information should be examined before making assumptions. Do you think standardized tests should play a role in assessing an individual's ability or in determining the value of a teacher or a school? Um, I don't think so. I mean, APs are a little bit different, AP testing, because I feel like your teacher should prepare you for those, but everything else, I feel like it shouldn't be a fair reflection of you or your teacher or the school, because that's not all you're learning when you're in class. No, because uh, people have different curriculums and uh, learn different stuff. Also, people test well on values which don't reflect your education. No because some good teachers don't, like their kids actually don't score as well because they just have a different, they don't like to focus so much on the tests. Tests rarely have the ability to accurately measure a student's academic potential, so it is unfair to rely on test scores to place students into a particular academic track as they often are today. Academic tracking based on test scores is especially problematic because it can impact a student's future. Tracking often separates students from a young age and gives different types of instruction to different students. It has been proven that, at the end of their high school experiences, the gulf between students who were in upper track classes and those in the lower track classes is wider than when they entered. Do you think that standardized tests should play a role in education in America? No. Like, especially with, like, getting into college and stuff. Like, I think it's good that a lot of colleges are, like, steering away from standardized tests and, like, that you can submit them, but you don't have to um, because, yeah, it's not really, like, it doesn't give an overall view of, like, the person. As stated in the article, The Effects of Standardized Testing, Examinations are a virtual necessity which will continue until some new device is discovered that will fulfill in a better way the function of the examination both from the educational and social viewpoints. This suggests one potential reason why little has been done to decrease the use of standardized tests and the impact they have on a student's future. The only way to create an equal opportunity for all students to succeed is to abandon standardized tests completely. Once these tests have been abolished, all schools will be required to test their students to measure their understanding of various topics. This will allow teachers to determine which areas need to be focused on more closely and what individual students need to be successful. Although students will still be tested, their scores will only be used by teachers to benefit their learning and will not impact their future opportunities. Instead of using standardized tests as a way to measure student achievement and ability, a student's grades throughout their years of schooling will be examined. This will serve as a better representation of a student's true potential for future success. Abolishing standardized tests and following the solution presented will eliminate many of the negative effects these tests often have and most importantly will give all students a more equal opportunity to succeed.